this is uh, data from uh, one of my lab students uh, that I got. And uh, this is the graph that was produced. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and instead of uh, just looking at this graph, let's build it one more time, okay? So um, to open up, a, of course, a new tab, I just press that little thing there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my column something that makes sense to me, okay? So concentration of NaCl, that makes sense, right? Because that's was what the what was labeled on the, well, uh, on the bottles of NaCl, and that's one of the axes of our um, graph, and uh, we're determining the density, of course, by the percentage of NaCl, uh, so the density of our unknown by the percentage of NaCl in these standards, okay? Does everybody understand that that's what we're doing in this lab, right? Everybody get that? Just at least shake your head. Uh, entertain me, okay, cool. Um, okay, so the um, percent NACLs were written on the bottles, and they were 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 percent, okay? Notice I put in the second column density, and I put the units that I have it in, okay? Um, that unequivocally tells me what units you have them in, obviously, and um, makes it less, um, makes me wonder less about what your data is like. The other thing I want to um, show you is that all of my data points have the same number of um, uh, figures after the significant figures after the decimal place. So the way to do that, to get them all in the same uh, n same number after the decimal place is to go up here to the number box and you can see there's like a increase decimal and decrease decimal button. Just click that if you highlight all of them and you see that it increases or decreases the decimal depending on what you want to do, okay? I have this to three spaces after the decimal spot. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph it. So I'm going to highlight both uh, columns of numbers. Um, then I'm going to say insert. And then I'm going to go over to the graphs here. And then I'm going to push scatter. And then I'm going to go to the first scatter plot here. When I do that, you see that it gives me this line here. Okay. Um, I like to just delete this thing so I can get a longer axis. And this, uh, while this chart shows the data, it doesn't label it, right? So, like, if you were to just show somebody this chart, they'd be like, what does this even mean, right? This doesn't have any labels. I don't understand. So we're gonna, I want you to put a title on this. I want you to put uh, axes labels too, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. So um, you can see up at the top, there's a series of buttons up here. If you click um, this one here, you can get rid of that again. If you prefer, if you don't, I don't care. And then we can do the chart title. And I would like, I like to call, so you, the way you do this is you do the y-axis versus the x-axis. That's how you call a chart. Um, I'm going to call this um, density, of course, versus uh, concentration of NaCl. Okay, so when you put brackets around something, that means concentration of, okay? Then I'm going to come over to the axis here. Highlight it, put density in grams per mil. Whoops. Like that. And then here I'm going to do just percent NACL, like that. Okay, pretty straightforward, right? Then I'm sorry to bore those of you who know how to do this already. Um, then I'm going to, in order to put my trend line on my graph, 
I'm going to uh, left click on one of the data points and then I'm going to right click on that same data point then I'm going to go down on my menu to add trend line there. Then I'm going to add a linear trend line. It's usually highlighted for you. It's the default. Then I'm going to display my equation on the chart. That's how you get your density of your unknown. And I'm also going to display my R squared value on the chart. That's how you know if your data is good or not. Okay, the closer it is to one, the better you got. If it's like 9.5, it's not very good data. If it's 9.9, it's all right data. If it's 9.99, then it's good, okay? You'll see that in the lab, you'll rarely get that you'll get it to be exactly perfect unless you do these experiments, you know, a million times and you get your hands to be very good at doing them, okay? So the first time, not expect to get the best lines, okay? But it's good to think about. Okay, we're going to close this, and you see it's produced this little box here. Okay, you see my graph here. This is actual data from the lab, 9 point, or point nine nine five five. Uh, again, not the best, but you know, not not super bad. Um, and you can see here we've got an equation that says y equals point zero zero seven two x plus 0.9652. So Y, remember, is the density, and X is the percentage of NaCl, right? So if you want to figure out what your percentage of NaCl is, you know the density of your unknown, right? So you can plug that into your Y value here, rearrange, algebraically rearrange your equation, and figure out what your density of your sodium chloride solution is. Okay, is everybody cool with that? So that's essentially what you do. I will post, so I obviously I recorded this. Um, I'm not on camera except for just two seconds, so don't be looking for me, so it'll be mostly my voice. But um, I'm recording the screen too. I'll post this as soon as I get uh, done with class today, okay? And then you guys can have it um, for next week, okay? Cool?